There's a lot to learn about medical cannabis, and a great place to start is on basic concepts and terminology. What is cannabis sativa? Did you say cannabinoids? Are terpenes and strains the same thing? And there's so much more. So let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. I'm a board certified pediatrician in Tampa, Florida, owner of Holistic Relief, a medical cannabis clinic, which is a subdivision of Holistic Pediatrics and Family Care, which is my main clinic. We're today going to be talking about some of the terminology that I will be going over in much more detail as we go through this series on Medical Cannabis 101. So um, I'm going to be doing all these different videos. By all means, if there are questions that people have, topics about it that you want to hear about, send me a message, drop it into the comments. I'd be happy to make a video if there are people who are looking for this type, a certain type of information. So also we do ask, if you like this, please subscribe. Please subscribe to this channel. Click that button right there. Share with other people. Give a thumbs up. Tell us that you like it. This really inspires us to make more. And of course, it helps other people find us through all the different ways. Now, let's first start off with cannabis sativa. What is cannabis sativa? Now, most people think that that means it's marijuana, and it's not. Cannabis sativa is both hemp as well as marijuana. And that's, of course, true whether it's medical marijuana or whether it's people who adult use or recreational uses as well. But both of these plants, which make cannabinoids, are cannabis sativa. That's the genus and species. There's a lot of subsets to those things, which we're going to get into. But cannabis sativa actually represents both. And you'll hear the word sativa in there. Because one of the things we also talk are different types of strains. You'll hear about indigas and sativas, but technically indiga plants, they are also cannabis sativa. Now, in addition to that, we mentioned it's both hemp as well as marijuana. Now, in terms of hemp, as you probably know, the main cannabinoid is called CBD. Although it does contain other minor cannabinoids, even small amounts of THC. In addition to that, hemp is a very high amount, has a very high amount of a very important omega-6 fatty acid, one that does not promote inflammation, which is called linoleic acid, gamma linoleic acid, GLA. So it's the gamma. And a lot of omega-6 fatty acids actually promote inflammation, but GLA does not. And why is that important? Because so many of the conditions that medical cannabis, that CBD, medical THC that they, they, they treat have inflammation. Right. So anything we can do to keep inflammation at a lower level, that's going to be good for these conditions. Okay. now, of course, people talk about marijuana. um, They use their term cannabis to describe that medical cannabis often is referred to even as marijuana and not CBD in the dispensaries. You know, in the dispensaries, at least here in Florida, medical cannabis is or medical marijuana is considered what contains THC and low THC marijuana is considered the the CBD. So they don't even call it that in terms of the products. Although when you go to look, you'll see what the ingredients actually are as to whether they have CBD or THC. But um, of course, the main difference is CBD does not have the intoxicating effects and THC does have the intoxicating effects, of course, being a dose dependent um, situation and with the knowledge that CBD lowers the intoxicating effect of the THC. Now, one of the things that you'll hear discussed is what's called the entourage effect. And the entourage effect is recognizing that in the plant that Mother Nature gave us, there are hundreds and hundreds of different compounds, not just CBD, not just THC, not just terpenes, which we'll get into too. But there are a lot of other, um, all those different ingredients make up why it's felt that you may hear the term whole plant medicine. And all of that means it's not just an isolate. It's not just an isolate of CBD or an isolate of THC, but it's all of the ingredients in the plant. And especially when it's take, when the plant itself is used, whether it's inhaled or made into for cooking, or for that matter, made into things like live rosin or RSO, which are other ways of, of concentrating it. It contains all of those different ingredients all in one, the way that mother nature presented it to us. Now, also just in turning and understanding these cannabinoids as well. So I mentioned in terms of THC and CBD, but you'll also hear out that there's different types of THC, nine delta THC, which is what actually comes from the plant when um, what's called THC, um, the uh, A, the THC, the acid form, which is what's found naturally in the plant, in the raw plant. And it doesn't get a person high, not until it's heated and it becomes nine delta THC. 
But you'll hear also about 8 delta THC and 10 delta THC, which are other forms of THC that have intoxicating properties as well. And we will certainly get into that later in this series. And then not just CBDs, but there's so many other Cs. There's CBN, CBG, CBGA, CBDV. And we'll also be able to get into all this. But each of those can have its own qualities, their own properties, the things that are best. So when I'm working with a patient, with a family, I'm really trying to get to well, what are the specific symptoms that we're trying? And I may be putting somebody on three or four different products to hit those different things. Okay. Now, another term that you hear a lot are is about what, terpenes. Now, terpenes is not just what gives its flavor and taste to the to the plant. So you may, if you've been around people who have smoked it, you may realize sometimes it smells kind of like skunky or sometimes floral or sometimes more fruity. And it's not the cannabinoids that make that happen. It's the terpenes. But also terpenes have their own effects. Some terpenes are more calming. Some terpenes are more focus based. Some may be better for pain. So we'll get into that. We'll talk about how the different terpenes can be used and how I would use a particular product in order to do that. And that's where it kind of comes around to strains. So we'll hear about things like indigas and sativas and hybrids, which are the main categories of the plants, even though they're technically almost all hybrids. But the it's the terpene profiles as well as the minor cannabinoids that this, that make this particular strain or that particular strain. Kind of like how there's green apples and there's red apples, but there's lots of red apples. There's some green apples too, but there are lots of different ones. They all can taste different. They can have a different crunch, different smell. It's all about those terpenes. Okay. Now, not just pure strains, which is what comes from a plant itself. But also there can be isolates, which means they're just isolating one particular cannabinoid or blends where they may remove some of the cannabinoids or some of the terpenes, or they may even make a particular blend that this is a blend that's better for attention and focus. or this is better than, um, than for instance, uh, pain or something like that. Um, there's a reason why I use a particular um, over-the-counter um, CBD and other hemp-derived company called Miriam's Hope because they're the only ones that let you choose the different terpenes that are out there. You can even, they have different blends as well. As fact, you can even pick your own terpene to decide up to four which ones you want into your blend, which is absolutely amazing that they do that. I don't know of any other company that does that, and we'll certainly get into that more too, but hats off to, uh, to Miriam's Hope uh, for, for doing that. That's wonderful. And of course, so many different ways of taking it. The, the classic way that people have done it has been smoking it. And as a physician, I do not recommend that cannabis be smoked by any ways. It certainly can be dry herb vaporized where the, um, the flower itself is heated to a temperature where the active ingredients like the terpenes and the cannabinoids release, but it doesn't burn the plant. Kind of goes in green, comes out uh, bronze, like, you know, baked, broiled kind of way, but it's nothing burnt. There's no burning happening that's going into the lungs. Um, and of course, that's really good. You want to avoid the burning if you can. Um, oral absorption. So people will do gummies, of course, and they can swallow it. But anything that's absorbed through the mouth, whether um, it's held under the tongue or held into here or like put up into that face up into there, when it's absorbed through the oral lining, it gets in quicker, but it also avoids the liver where it's broken down. Not just broken down to make weaker, but also this THC, 9-delta THC, can be converted to a different form called 11-hydroxy THC, which is even more intoxicating than regular 9-delta THC. Now, of course, it can be swallowed, and when you swallow it, that all goes to the liver before it goes to the rest of the body and makes that happen. Um, but there's nasal sprays. They're called inhaled, even though it's not used in the lung, but it's sold, at least in Florida, under the inhale rage. Um, there can be patches that people can put on that are sustained release. They can do almost like a micro dosing, small amounts being released all day long. There are creams and gels that can be put over certain areas that if there may be certain pain in that particular area that can be applied straight to those areas, whether it's muscle pain, neuropathic pain, etc. So there's so many ways, so many exciting things to talk about. I look forward to sharing more about this with you as we go through our series on Medical Cannabis 101. Have a great day.